Hey everybody, this is Herschel Froom from High School Top 200 and the number 11 spot on the national rankings goes to St. Peter's College, Auckland. Now I didn't find, um, I mean I didn't, I didn't think too much of St. Peter's at first. Um, I knew who was returning, I know that they had a lot of players coming back. Um, Apitone was one obviously and Denzel was another. Uh, those two boys alone in that midfield is, is pretty dangerous. Both of them explosive guys. Um, I knew Josh Loveday was going to be back, and also Sam Way was going to be back. Nico Jones as well. And, you know, especially Zion Hall because of how big he is, and Hamda as well. I knew that these guys were coming back. The way that... And, and it's always something about... Um, St. Peter's College, and I think that they have a chip on their shoulder as not being looked at as one of the main schools in Auckland as a 1A team. And I think that always kind of hangs over them. Now, I I also I also think that even though they are really, really talented, I've always believed that they play to the talent of the other team. They play to the level of the other of the other team. Um, even when they've had really good sort of superstar teams, you never find that they were gonna blow somebody out by like 50, 60 points or, you know, 40, 50 points. For some reason it's only like a 14 point game when they really should be a 25 point game. You know, so I I always kind of wonder uh, why it, it ends up like that or why they play the, the way that they do or how why it ends up the way that, that it ends up. And so I've always kind of thought like maybe that's what it is. They always just play to the level of the team that's across from them even when they are a lot better than them. Um, like I said, Denzel and um, Apitone are going to be the main physical guys in that midfield and I'm glad that Denzel has moved from the wing where I never ever thought he should have been and moved him into the centers because that's where you're going to get or his power that he has and it's going to be put to use more than you know more than just being on the wing sitting and waiting kind of thing um and so he's going to have Josh Loveday feeding him the ball like that. Him and Apitone are probably going to have to figure out a way where they can both get their touches, they can both make... They can both make the effect that they need to make on the game. And there is a lot of good midfielding... Um, combinations in the 1A so they're really going to have to look at the other guys as well and figure out how they can be better than those guys on the other side or what strengths that they have that are going to overpower that other that other duo on the other side and that to me is exactly what it is it's going to be uh, explosiveness and power Apitone is a big kid who is just solid looks like he's just solid muscle and he just plays aggressively Denzel is the same. Denzel has just come back from injury, and, and I've hope and I hope that he's getting back into game shape because I think that's always. I mean, he just needs to be in shape, or because he's going to be. He could actually be one of those players where you could just look at him and be like, "Well, we could just put you in a hooker, and then have you play that way because of his body type." So I think if he wants to stay in the second in the in second five or in the midfield, he's going to have to work hard to maintain his body and his, maintain his fitness and things like that as well. Because second five is exactly where he needs to be or where he should be. Um, but they got to figure out a way how to uh, play all these guys from St. Ken's and Kings and Sacred and, and be able to put it over the top of those guys too. Um, the The more than capable of doing that as well they just got to figure it out together it's not like a, oh, i'll just do something and you do something it's like no you have to both do it at the same time and actually understand 
what each other is, is about to doing and knowing the tendencies of each other's play. Josh Loveday has got to be able to also um, sync up with both of them and be um, and be ready to call for their number when um, it's their time to do it. And so um, I'm their time to get involved in the game. Sam Way has got to get the ball out, and that's not a problem because he's just really good like that. He's really fast, and he's able to um, make those kind of changes in those games. I also think that when, when the forward pack does good, especially with a team like St. Peter's, um, and their forward pack usually is really good as a unit and they do work together hard, um, they're going to be able to provide a, a good platform for that backline to attack all day kind of thing. Um one thing that I did like um, is that Nico came back to school and he just lost a lot of weight, like just really, really in shape. And just a lot more muscle. And he looked a lot fitter. My thing is just like now he has to learn how to play he has to learn how to play with the new body type that he has. And it's not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing just to lose weight and be like, yeah, I'm going to be a lot better. It's like, no, because then your effect when you run is not going to be the same. Um, the way that um, you tackle is not going to be the same. The way that you blow out players is not going to be the same because you're not going to have that same weight behind you and things like that. You may have more power, but the weight's going to be different. So you still have to learn how to play with your body. And some things that you used to do, when you had that extra body weight, you can't do that anymore once you've lost the when you've lost the weight. It's just different. It just doesn't work out the same way. Um, Chris Halafia is as a guy that has been stuck in the second fifteen because Josh Wheeler just never got injured and he was just a really good player. And Chris just had to sit and wait his time. And so Chris Halafia is back this year, starting at open side, and he is uh, one of the quickest players around the park and so he is a guy that you're probably going to have to really really watch out for because he'll get into your business and then that ball is gone if you don't if you don't clean them out uh, like i said hamda and hamda um hamda and uh zion holo and hamda two uh two big boy props um two solid guys that are going to um physically dominate um physically get at you i hope that they send them into the defensive line a lot with a lot of ball and get these two running uh, give them space to run as well leo ngata ngata is the other one as well um nathaniel value is another one too that um you uh, both of those guys at lock where you you can have all these guys just set up to run and run and run and have it outside, have it at outside um, first five, you know, have it outside of Josh Loveday. Don't keep them all bunched up into one little thing, you know, like spread them out a bit, you know, play a bit more advanced rugby and play with the space that is given. Um, St. Peter's going to be really good. I'm really interested to see how they put it together. I'm really interested to see how they go at these big teams and which ones they can upset. Um, obviously, I've got them at 11. And so I've got um, St. Kennegan's, King's, um, Sacred Heart and Auckland Grammar ranked ahead of them. But I do think that St. Peter's is good enough to take out two of those teams um, throughout the year. Um I want, and, and that's what I'm going to be waiting for really is to see which ones they do take out, which ones do they do step up on. Usually it's going to be grammar that they're going to really step up on because it's just that battle of the bridge thing. And so, yeah, we'll see which one the other one is. That's my review for St. Peter's College. Sitting at 11th, top 25. Peace.